All right, let's find the terminal velocity of a raindrop. <clears throat> they say the raindrop is 1,200 meters up in the sky inside a cloud when it starts falling. Uh, they give us the drag coefficient right here, 0. 0.6. And then we're going to need the density of water and the density of air, and you'll see why. They give us the radius, and they tell us to assume it is spherical. And if you remember, the drag force is a function of the area, so we need to know what kind of shape it falls in. It really falls in the shape of a raindrop, right? That was hard. But that's for a whole other class. <clears throat> If we remember how we derived this drag force, the first thing we did was say, okay, well, terminal velocity occurs when the acceleration is equal to zero. So we said that if something had some weight, mg, and a force of drag opposing the motion, because it's falling through the sky, some velocity in that direction, then we sum those forces and we say the force of drag minus mg is equal to the mass times the acceleration, which is zero. If it's not accelerating anymore, that means it's reached terminal speed. So we can say that these two things have to be equal. The force of drag is then equal to the weight, and we're going to use that. Um, <clears throat> so we need to find what the mg is. And call that the force of gravity because for our formula we have terminal velocity equals the square root of 2 times the force of gravity over the drag coefficient times the density of the medium it's falling through times the area. So we're going to use that, but um, we need to figure out what that Fg is. And they gave us uh, a fluid, so it's a little bit different, right? Well, we can get the mass of something uh, as uh, the volume times the density. So we're talking about the density of water in this case. And we still need to multiply by that G. Uh, let's keep them separate. So this is just a definition. Um, putting that into this equation, I get the force due to gravity is equal to rho times the volume times gravity. All right, um, what's the volume now? The volume, they said, is a sphere or a, a spherical shape. Then the volume would be equal to four thirds pi r cubed. Substitute that in there. We get 4 thirds pi r cubed times the density times gravity. <clears throat> All right, uh, we can take this and do a terminal velocity now. We have the terminal velocity is equal to 2 times 4 thirds pi r cubed times the density of water times gravity, all of the drag coefficient which they gave us, times, this is the medium it's falling through, air, and they gave us that, and we now, um, we get the, what would the cross-sectional area be? Well, we can assume that the area is, uh, it was a circle falling through the air like this, the cross-sectional area, we can get a rough estimate as just the area of a circle like this. So we get a pi r squared. All right, um, that goes here, pi r squared. And we can do a little bit of simplification. It'll give us the square root of eight times the radius times rho water times gravity, all divided by 3 times the coefficient of drag times rho of air. So I just 
that would give us our uh, terminal velocity, our terminal speed. Um, in this case, it comes out to 7.4 meters per second. Not very fast. It's, think about, I don't know, I like to think is 10 meters is about 10 yards, and a football field's 100 yards. Well, each 10 yard chunk is actually marked out visually, so that helps a lot of people and helps me visualize what maybe 10 meters would be. And this is a little less than one of those markers in a second, so that's not very quick. Um, what would the speed have been before impact if there's no drag? And notice this, we found the terminal velocity, it had nothing to do with the 1200 meter cloud that they gave us. Now we can actually look at this cloud and say, all right, the raindrop started in here. How fast is it going before it hits the ground? 1200 meters down. Oh, that's easy. Um, not easy, just very fundamental back to where we started. Uh, the acceleration is just G in this case. so. All we have to do. Um, it started from rest. We want to find the final velocity, and it fell 1200 meters. We can say v final is equal to v naught plus 2 times gravity times delta y. This is the 1200. We know g, and it started from rest. So we can calculate our final velocity as 153 meters per second. Way faster, right? Um, same principle applies if you shot a gun up, right? It's theoretically in a vacuum, right? It would Whatever your magnitude is of this velocity you fired it at, it would be equal but opposite right before it hit the ground or the same level it was shot from. But it actually comes down a decent amount slower. Um, the velocity vector does this, turns around, and it never quite gets all the way to its full size. Um, that is because of terminal velocity. The forces at some point in its travels balanced each other out. The force of drag balanced out the the force of the weight, and there was no more acceleration at that point. Um, the next problem I'm going to do is going to be shooting a cannonball up, and uh, we're going to be looking at the force of drag slowing us down. So, force of drag is going to be pushing us in the same direction as the weight. But what I want to show you in the next problem and make very clear is that it's going to give us a function, our acceleration is a function of velocity. Our acceleration will not be constant. And that's because the force of drag is proportional to the velocity squared. So when we put that in our summation of our forces and solve for the acceleration, we're, we're going to get a differential equation. Um, don't be scared, I just want to show you the difference. Uh, don't, I'm not going to test you on the type of problem I'm about to do next.